the slides for you. So we are going to be talking about keto diet for weight loss. If you're interested in losing some belly fat, losing some overall fat, I'm going to break down and reveal to you some strategies that I've applied to thousands of clients for extreme weight loss, but I say that in a good way because we don't want to focus on weight loss. We want to focus on health, and as you get healthy, the weight comes off, and it could happen rapidly. So I'm going to get into this presentation. Before I do, I want to just say hello. My name is Ben Azadi. I am the best-selling author of three books, founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, our mission is to deliver this information to 1 billion people on planet Earth. We speak about ketosis, intermittent fasting, and other ancient healing strategies. I'm located here in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida. Let me know in the chat box where you are located, where are you watching from right now. So let's talk about this. Here's, here's today's agenda. We're going to be learning about the keto diet. And not all keto diets are created equal, by the way. There's a lot of people who do keto who might get some initial weight loss, but then they gain the weight back, they hit a plateau. So I'm going to discuss some stat strategies so you don't have to deal with that. Here is today's agenda. We're going to dive into hidden sources of keto foods that can be inflammatory. I'm going to give you a list of all these items, and I want you to write them down. And if you're consuming them, make sure you get rid of them. I'm also going to give you some examples of healthy meals. I'm going to give you recipes meal plans. I'll talk about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You want to be eating these clean foods to really burn some fat. How to even test to know if you're burning fat. What are some optimal glucose and ketone numbers? We'll get into that for beginners. We'll also get into that for some advanced strategies. And then I'm also going to share with you two scientifically proven ways to double ketones. For, for some people, quadruple ketones. So let's get started. Here's a list of common inflammatory keto foods, which I recommend you limit or avoid altogether. We have legumes. And you might be thinking, yeah, I'm doing keto, Ben. I don't, I don't consume legumes. Well, peanut butter is a legume. Hummus is a legume. And for some people, it'll be hard to digest this because they contain anti-nutrients like lectin, uh, lectins, and that could actually be inflammatory. So I do recommend you do an audit and remove these. Corn, uh, corn is GMO mostly, and so is soy. Those are two products I don't recommend. If you're going to do soy, make sure it comes from a non-GMO non organic and it's fermented like tempeh and natto. Those could be okay. We also want to avoid burning and blackening our meat, our red meat, because when you start to overcook red meat, eat it well done, that actually creates something called advanced glycation end products, which stand for ages, and rightfully so, because it does create an oxidative response in your body, and it could actually age you faster. Farm fish is also something we want to limit or avoid. They typically have high amounts of polychlor um, PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls. Those could be inflammatory. Those could be carcinogenic. So instead, we want more of a, a wild-caught fish. Nightshades are something to be aware of. They come in the form of tomatoes and eggplants and uh, other foods out there, but those could be inflammatory. They contain anti-nutrients, which can create inflammation. And potato starch, I threw that in there because some keto products do have potato starch, so just be aware. Now, out of this list I just shared, there is actually a, an entire list I'm about to reveal for you that is actually worse than sugar, worse than everything I shared already, and these are all keto-friendly. So these are the oils and the fats I want you to avoid on keto as much as possible, because these fats you see right here on your screen, and I'll read them out to you for those who are not watching on YouTube, these fats contain, uh, well, they're processed in a way that makes them highly rancid, and the body cannot process these fats. Yes, they're all keto-friendly. Yes, they might get you in ketosis, but they're not getting you healthy, and they will not help you lose weight in the long run. They are inflammatory. Uh, research has shown that these fats that you see on your screen right now could actually create inflammation around your cells and cell membrane for six to 12 months. I also want to note something really important from the beginning. A lot of people come to keto because they want to lose weight, which is fine. Wanting to lose weight is a worthy goal. I had that goal back in 2008 where I lost 80 pounds. I used to be obese. But the body doesn't work that way. We do not lose weight to get healthy. We get healthy to lose weight. You might have heard Dr. Eric Berg say that. He is absolutely correct. So what we want to do is get healthy. The question is, all right, Ben, how, how do I get healthy? We focus on reducing inflammation. Everything I'm sharing with you here today 
is intended to help your cell membrane reduce inflammation. So now your fat burning hormones can connect to your receptor sites and you can burn fat. And as you get healthy, the fat comes off by default and it happens very fast. The items on the, on the screen right here, these cause the most amount of inflammation in your body. They're worse than sugar because at least you could burn off sugar with exercise and movement, but you cannot burn these fats. So here's the list. Do an audit, write these down. If you see any of these in your keto foods, mm, throw it away and replace them for healthier options, which I'll share with you shortly. Canola oil, not good. Corn oil, soybean oil, cottonseed oil, safflower oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil. I have safflower oil in there twice, excuse me, and rice bran oil. There's also one more I'll add to here, fish oil. Fish oil is also a rancid oil and I do not recommend fish oil. So instead, replace them with these more stable fats that actually support the cells and support the cell membranes so you can burn fat fast. Olive oil is terrific. Avocado oil is great. Grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, delicious, so good for you. Even duck fat, lard, and coconut oil. And I would even add beef tallow to the mix. These are much, much better options. All right, here's a pro tip for you. Now do this for 30 days. You don't have to do it any longer, but remove cow dairy, especially pasteurized cow dairy for about 30 days because it, for most people, it will create an inflammatory response and it could slow down your weight loss efforts. So I recommend replacing your cow dairy with more sheep dairy, goat dairy. If you're drinking milk, replace it with macadamia nut milk or coconut milk. That will go a long way with your weight loss efforts. And then I also recommend replacing spinach and almonds for 30 days. I know, spinach, almonds, I thought those were healthy. I mean, almond flour is in a lot of keto products, but here's the deal. These two items contain high amounts of oxalates. Oxalates are like tiny little needles that poke holes in your gut, which could actually be an inflammatory response and lead to leaky gut and eventually autoimmune disease and a weakened immune system. So we wanna limit oxalates. We wanna limit anti-nutrients and spinach and almonds are loaded with them. So I recommend for 30 days, get rid of them. You'll see some weight come off just by doing this one tip. Replace the almonds with walnuts, much better. Pecans, Brazil nuts, peely nuts, macadamia nuts. Those are much better for you. And then replace the spinach with more bitters because bitters will help you produce bile and break down fat. That's great. And it has a detoxification effect. So I love arugula, dandelion greens, bok choy, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, I'll even throw cauliflower into the mix. Those are much better than the spinach. What about artificial sweeteners? I get this question a lot. Is sucralose good? Is aspartame good? What about stevia? Here's a list of the items that are um, artificial sweeteners that we want to avoid as much as possible. These should have an X next to them. I don't know why it's not showing that, but we want to limit things like xylitol, maybe remove it altogether, maltitol, sorbitol, mannitol, aspartame, and sucralose are two of the worst here. Get rid of those altogether. Saccharin, asulsifame, potassium. Here's why. For example, there was a study on PubMed, and you could see the, the, the link for it down below, a human study on pharmacokinetics. And it showed sucralose, it wanted to track how sucralose, this artificial sweetener found in Splenda, Splenda moves through the body. And guess what? They could only account for 96.7% of it, meaning the other 3.3% of sucralose was untraceable. Was it turning into an unstable, unusual metabolite or is it bioaccumulating in the body somewhere else? We don't know the answer to that, but that's a scary question. Another study on 17 obese women showed that sucralose increased glucose and insulin levels following an oral glucose test. Other researchers, however, have not found these glycemic or insulinogenic effects. So it is variable on the person. So another study, here are, here are five studies right here on PubMed and Science Direct that showed Splenda may cause weight gain, Splenda affects uh, gut bacteria in a negative way, and cooking with Splenda is one of the worst things you can do. That could be very inflammatory. So if you're making keto baked goods with Splenda, that is a bad idea. Instead, we wanna switch over to these healthier options. And I still wouldn't overdo it with these items, but monk fruit is better, pure stevia is better, and erythritol is better. But if you find yourself consuming these keto sweeteners that are 
somewhat healthy, but it's leading to sugar cravings and you find yourself actually addicted to these, then maybe you wanna also scale back or remove these altogether. But these are my go-to on keto. I have these on not a regular basis, but from time to time. Here are the best foods to eat on keto if you want to reduce inflammation and burn fat. Grass-fed butter and ghee, terrific. It has healthy saturated fat. Guess what? Your cell membrane is made up of saturated fat and these items actually give you your cell, give your cells what it needs to burn fat. Um, Grass-fed and finished beef and lamb, terrific. Organic pastured eggs, awesome. Coconuts, coconut oil, terrific. MCT oil, avocados, avocado oil, I already mentioned those. Olives, green leafy vegetables like the ones I already mentioned. Macadamia nuts, uh, bison, organ meats, organic pastured poultry, mushrooms, those are healthier for you. So before we get into how many calories you should eat on keto, I wanna first say thank you for watching this video up until this point. And if you're watching right now, hit the thumbs up button on this video. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button on this video down below. Hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell so you're notified when we release a brand new video, when we go live. By the way, every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm live right right here with you on the weekly Keto Camp show is what you're watching today. So I'm gonna get to some questions a little bit later. So I see some questions in the chat box from Terry and Kim and Enter and Ramikla and Becky. I promise I'll get to your questions, but please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We just passed 120,000 subscribers here on the Keto Camp YouTube channel, and I'm so grateful for you Keto Campers. I love you all. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching these videos. We are dedicated to getting the science to you so you understand the science, apply it, and your body heals, and then you share it with a friend. So what about calories? Should you focus on calories in versus calories out? Look, I believe calories matter, but I don't believe they're important. They're actually a big distraction to what really matters, which is your cells and cell metabolism. So instead, focus on hormones. Focus on reducing inflammation, and the weight will come off by default. So we want to prioritize protein. If you're going to track a macro, track protein, especially if you've been doing this for at least 14 days, Start your keto meals with protein. That's because protein is actually gonna help you feel more full and satisfied and it'll help you burn more fat. So I recommend at all of your keto meals, have about 40, at least 40 to 50 grams of animal-based protein, which equates to about eight to 10 ounces of protein. It'll activate things like peptide YY, leptin, cholecystokinin. These are hormones and chemicals that help you feel full and satisfied. And then you wanna just fill the rest of that meal with enough fat so that you're satisfied. And then keep your total grams of carbohydrates below 50. If you're doing these three things, prioritizing protein, filling the rest with fat, keeping carbs below 50 grams per day, you're gonna be in a fat loss state. You'll see. If you are brand new to keto, here are some great keto uh, strategies for beginners or somebody who's just struggling to get into ketosis. Follow the two, 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 two rule developed by my mentor, Dr. Daniel Pampa. Every day you want to consume two tablespoons of olive oil or avocado oil. Then you want to consume two tablespoons of coconut oil or MCT oil, more on those two items later, two tablespoons of grass-fed butter or grass-fed ghee, and then two teaspoons of sea salt. This is going to teach your body to start utilizing fatty acids for fuel instead of sugar. Now here are some example meal uh, keto meal examples for weight loss. I recommend if you're watching this here on YouTube, take a screenshot, cook this for breakfast. Option number one is five runny sunny side up eggs with arugula, avocados, maybe sprinkle some nutritional yeast over that. Option number two would be a a fatty keto smoothie with some coconut milk, maybe some avocado in there and some grass fed collagen protein powder and a nut butter like walnut butter and ice. For lunch, here's a perfect example for you to help you burn fat and it tastes delicious a fatty salad with five to seven cups of green leafy vegetables, drizzle it with avocado oil or olive oil, throw some macadamia nuts and sea salt, and then top it with maybe some wild salmon or grass-fed beef. Option two could be spaghetti squash with free-range chicken and macadamia nuts and olive oil. For dinner, what about dinner? Well, having half a sweet potato should be okay. Shouldn't knock you out of ketosis, especially if you've been doing this for at least 30 days. Have that with Brussels sprouts and maybe some organic chicken leg, chicken thighs with the skin on, or eight eight ounces of grass-fed steak with Brussels sprouts and one tablespoon of butter right on top of that. That's a great way, and it's delicious, by the way, but it'll help you burn fat. 
If you want more of a comprehensive aisle by aisle uh, keto shopping list, you could find that on my Keto Camp Blueprint. This is a free guide, and you could get this over at ketocampblueprint.com. Ketocampblueprint.com. Alina, if you could post this in the chat box, Alina is part of the Keto Camp team. All right, how do you even measure ketones? How do you know if you're in a fat burning state? Let's talk about that. There are three ways to measure ketones. There's three types of ketones. So we have beta hydroxybutyrate, which is usually the gold standard, it's blood ketones. We have acetoacetate, which is found in the urine. Those are using urine strips that you see there in the middle. And then we have acetone in the breath. And out of these three options, one of them doesn't work, the urine strips. If you are using urine strips, you're gonna be frustrated because when your body is efficient at metabolizing ketones and the brain is using those ketones, which is what we want, Guess well, guess what? It won't show up in the urine. It'll lead you to being frustrated, but you might be in ketosis. It's just not showing on those urine strips. So I don't recommend using urine strips. I recommend either using a, a machine like BioSense, which is the only accurate breath ketone meter I've ever come across. The benefit of using them, you don't have to prick your fingers. The drawback, you don't get a glucose number. But if you want to use them, it's they're called BioSense, mybiosense.com. We have a coupon code to get $20 off their meter and that is keto camp at checkout. But I'm gonna focus on beta hydroxybutyrate, blood ketones, blood glucose, and I use a machine called Keto Mojo. So here are some optimal blood glucose and ketone ranges to look at. If you're hitting all the ranges I'm about to share with you right now, you're gonna be blasting fat and you're gonna be feeling good. We want our fasting glucose to be somewhere between 70 and 90. We want our ketones to be somewhere between 0.8 and 2.8. That's blood beta hydroxybutyrate. The higher the ketones are not necessarily better. Here at Keto Camp, we don't chase ketones, we chase results. The sweet spot to be in that fat burning state is between 0.8 and 2.8. That's some beginner strategies. Let's get into some advanced strategies. One hour after eating a meal, which is the term postprandial, that's what it means, we want your blood ketones to still be in that range, 0.8, to 2.8. We also wanna look at glucose. If your glucose is under 120 an hour after eating, terrific, that meal worked for you. Two hours after eating a meal, we want blood ketones to still be in that range, 0.8 to 2.8. We want glucose to drop below 100. If you're hit, hitting all those numbers you see right there on the screen, what I just shared with you, what you're doing is working for you and it's working for you very well. So here are two scientifically proven ways to enhance ketone production. If you're struggling to get into ketosis, you're gonna love these tips right here. Number one, C8 caprylic acid. There was a very interesting study on, there was three studies, two on PubMed, one on academic, and it showed that C8 alone increased plasma ketone response more than coconut oil or any medium chain triglyceride. That's because C8 caprylic acid um, which is an MCT fat, medium chain triglyceride, those actually bypass digestion and go right into the mitochondria of your cell. So I love C8. I put a little bit of that in my coffee on a daily basis. Secondly, speaking of coffee, caffeine. There was a great study in the Canadian Journal of Physiology and Pharmacology that showed that when these participants consumed coffee, there were 10 healthy uh, participants given caffeine in the morning, it stimulated ketone production in a dose-dependent manner, and it also raised plasma-free fatty acids, which helped your body burn fat. So those are two tips for you. Throw some C8 caprylic acid in your morning cup of coffee, boom, you'll be accelerating ketones and land into the great land of ketosis. Hey, I have a special announcement for you all. Before I get to that, I wanna share something with you. I have been working on a book called KetoFlex for two years now. And this book is, I believe, one of the greatest books on keto ever written. I dive deep into my four pillars on keto. I have an entire chapter on how to do keto for women, how to do fasting for women, whether you're a cycling woman, perimenopausal, postmenopausal. I talk about carnivore, I talk about the history of keto. And the book is finally available for pre-order. If you go to it should show a photo of it. Let me actually change my screen here. If you go to ketoflexbook.com, let me pull up the page for you and then I'll get to your questions. If you go to ketoflexbook.com, 
it'll take you to the Amazon page. And guess what? It is available for pre-order today. So check this out. Here is the link. Um, Amazon, uh, it's available for Kindle. It's going to be available worldwide for release April 12th, 2021. And you could get it right now for pre-order on Kindle. Hopefully soon we could have it available for paperback. And then eventually we'll have it available for Audible. But as you can see, if you go to ketoflexbook.com, it'll take you to this page. You could order it. You could pre-order it. It shows view order because I already pre-ordered my own book. But if you go here, it'll show you to pre-order it. I cannot wait to get this book into your hands. It's about 200 pages long, easy to read, very digestible, and I have a lot of research in there as well. And this is going to be the most comprehensive, easy to follow keto book you've ever written. So that's ketoflexbook.com. Thank you so much, Becky, for putting that in the notes right there. Okay. I hope that was beneficial. Now let's get to some common keto questions that you're asking me in the chat box. If this has been valuable so far, hit the thumbs up button on this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you could get notified when we release a brand new video. And uh, we do that on a consistent uh, basis. So let's get to some questions. Cornelia says, I love the 2222 rule. I do olive oil, MCT oil, butter, ghee, salt. Awesome work, Cornelia. Nurse Wendy says, I've been waiting for your Keto Flex book. I appreciate you, Wendy. Good to see you. Shelly says, that's awesome. Uh, Nareda says, I'm drinking my purity coffee with coconut oil right now. Me too. I have it right here. Good job. Purity coffee is the best. Ketocampcoffee.com. Use Keto Camp at checkout for 10% off. Uh, maca root powder. I use a little bit of that in my coffee. Chris, I like maca root. I wouldn't use it every single day, but I do like maca root. It could be a great adaptogen or actually could help with your uh, energy and vitality. So I like it. Sweet potatoes, gasp, really? Half a sweet potato shouldn't kick you out of ketosis, especially if you've been doing this for a while. So it should be okay. You could always touch those numbers I recommended to see if it works for you or not. Michelle in Miami. Hello, fellow Miami, and I'm here in Miami as well. Congrats on your book. Thank you so much. I'm super excited about the book. Let's see what questions we have here. I'm not very active, says Jesse. I intermittent fast with Keto. I do 24 schedule. Is that okay? I Will I see success? Yeah, Jesse, I like that schedule. Uh, I just wouldn't follow the same fasting schedule every single day. I would always mix it up. So maybe five days out of the week, you're doing a 24 schedule. And the other two days, maybe you're doing an OMAD or like a 16-8. What is your go-to food recommendation to get iron levels up while on keto? You know, I think the best way to do it is with a product called Energy Bits. I just interviewed Katherine Arnston, who is probably the leading researcher on algae, and they make a great product loaded with iron, loaded with nutrients, no oxalates, no anti-nutrients, doesn't kick you out of ketosis, no glucose response. So I would do that, energybits.com. We have a coupon code KETOCAMP that you could use at checkout for, I believe it's 20% off. You could also use a cast iron skillet to cook with. That'll help. You could also um, use uh, eat red meat. That'll help as well. Red meat is a good way to get some iron. And maybe use some essential oils in your house to get some like citrusy essential oils in your household. Which is more accurate, the blood meter or the breath meter? April, they're both accurate, but the blood meter gives you glucose and ketones. So uh, they're both pretty accurate as long as you're getting the Biosense breath meter. Can I do milk kefir on keto? Will want to make, I want to take care of my gut. Yeah, I like milk uh, kefir. I like it. Maybe if you could get like a goat kefir even better, but yeah, milk kefir is fine. Not if you're doing without dairy for 30 days though. After that point, should be fine. Um, my brother has, uh, I don't know what Nash is. What's Nash? I'm not sure what that is. Allulose could be okay, um, just not excessively, not excessively. Sesame oil could be okay as long as it's cold process organic and you're not heating it, you're using it for more of a dressing. That could be fine. Alina listed the no-goes on keto. It's awesome. What can I get a good vitamin D3 supplement that, that does not have these oils? Um, I like vitamin D, uh, DV3 by Systemic Formulas. Go to ketocampsupplements.com and type in DV3. That's the one I use. Amanda, good to see you in the UK. Beautiful face. Raquel, Mexican, currently in LA. Good to see you. We have Washington, DC, Canada in the house, Central Texas. I'm actually flying to, I'm flying to uh, 
this afternoon, I have a flight to Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm going to be there for the next four days, five days. I'm going to be speaking at Dr. Pampa's Live It to Lead It Health Conference in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Uh, so if you're in Utah, send me an email, support at ketocamp.com. I can get you an invite to the event. It's going to be an incredible event. I'm going to be speaking on keto. And then next week, I fly to Silicon Valley, California to speak at the Biohacking Congress. I'm going to be speaking with Dr. Mindy Peltz, Dr. Pampa, Thomas DeLauer, um, Sean Wells, uh, amazing. Dave Asprey is going to be speaking. That's biohackingcongress.com. And you can get a live stream ticket for that one. Use Keto Camp at checkout. Let's see. There's some questions. Lori says, super excited for the book. Also Keto Coffee right now with Four Sigmatic. I actually put Four Sigmatic in mine as well. Teresa says, I'm going to get the book. Who purchased the book already? I want to know. Who already pre-ordered it? Type in pre-order if you already took action and pre-ordered my book on Kindle. Hopefully, the paperback will be available soon, for sure, before April 12th. It will be on there. Loan in New Zealand, good to see you. Lois, good to see you. We have New Jersey in the house. We have Oakland, California. Hey, Lori, I'm going to be in Silicon Valley. Come join me. Marcella in Michigan. Karen in Oregon, good to see your beautiful faces. I love it. <clears throat> I didn't mean to send that right away. The rest of my comment, that is Elizabeth. I've been doing, I've been in keto camp for two weeks. Um, yeah, so here's what we want to do. We don't want to focus on the weight loss. Give the protocol I just shared seven weeks. The number on the scale should not determine your worth. The number on the scale should not determine if something is working for you or not. Pay attention to non-scale victories. Give it a good seven weeks. And then when you step on the scale in seven weeks, guess what? The weight will be off and you'll see some really positive results. But pay attention to how your clothes fit. Take body fat percentages. Uh, maybe how your clothes fit. How is your sleep? Is it improved? Your skin complexion, do you have more confidence? Do you have more energy? Those non-scale victories are more important. If you're tracking your scale, the number on the scale, and checking your weight every single day, every single week, it's going to lead to frustration. So give it a good seven weeks because we get healthy to lose weight. We don't lose weight to get healthy. So Nurse Wendy got the book pre-order. Awesome, Wendy. Thank you so much. Ron got the book pre-order. Jordy got the book pre-order. Awesome, Jody. Thank you, Gloria, for the congratulations. Pam Spray. Uh, I'm not a fan of Pam Spray. Just use the real oil, olive oil, coconut oil, grass-fed butter. Those are much better. <clears throat> will coconut creamer take you out of a fast? Yes, it will. Um, you could always check your glucose to see what it does. But yeah, it'll start the digestive process and it'll, it'll stop the benefits of your gut from healing during that fast. Hey, if you're getting any value so far on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button on this video if you haven't done so already. I'm going to answer a few more questions here. Sylvia pre-ordered the book. Oh, thank you so much. Diane pre-ordered the book. Thank you so much. Lori pre-ordered the book. Thank you so much. Look, even if you don't have a Kindle, I would love for you to still pre-order the book and maybe gift it to somebody before it even comes out on paperback. Um, I'm really excited about the book. Laura says, hello, I found fatty liver enzymes when I went down five points, also better blood pressure and thyroid thanks to keto. Laura from Southern California. That's amazing, Laura. Congratulations to you. I love that. I have not found a creamer that does not have ingredients which affects my sugars. Yeah, so then stick with more like maybe like a butter, grass-fed butter. <clears throat> Hi from Copenhagen. Looking forward to reading the Keto Flex book. Awesome. Wenchy. Awesome. Or wench. Does homemade, fresh, organic ginger tea made from stepped or steeped organic ginger with a few drops of stevia break a fast? Lynette, it'll break a traditional water fast because it'll start the, digest the digestion process, but you still could get a lot of the other benefits from it. Uh, I recommend seeing what it does to your glucose, but if you can, have about like 30 minutes before you break a fast. That'll be much better. Jason says, hi, Ben. I'm in the construction industry in Iowa. I've lost 50 pounds and I'm trying to figure out eating during strenuous work and how to balance fasting when I, without, with having enough energy for work. Get as much sleep as you can. We'll get at least seven hours of sleep, uh, quality sleep. And then what could be helpful for you is when you are eating, making sure you're eating until full, having enough protein. And then during your fast, during work, have plenty of electrolytes, plenty of water, high quality water and minerals. That'll help you out big time. Good to see you, Laura in Texas. Is keto okay for fatty liver disease? My mom has just been diagnosed. April, sorry to hear that about your mom. 
None of the advice here should replace medical advice, first and foremost, but healthy keto, everything that I just explained today could be tremendous for fatty liver disease. Uh, I actually have a video on my channel on fatty liver, so if you want to watch that, you'll understand more how keto could do that for fatty liver disease. By the way, you do not have to have a Kindle to read the book. There's a downloadable program for computer and other tablets and smartphones. I didn't know that. There you go. So ketoflexbook.com, you don't need a Kindle to read it. You could download a program on your computer. Thank you for that, Nurse Wendy. Roberta in Rome, Italy, good to see you. Yeah, it is. It's the right thing to do. When you, when you, when you think about the liver, what beats up the liver is a carbohydrates, bad fats, medication, alcohol, not clean fats. Clean fats and fasting, by the way, could be a great way for fatty liver. Ginger tea, uh, I just answered the, oh, shouldn't, it shouldn't Nick kick you out of ketosis, no. A fast, yes, ketosis, no. I'll answer a, a couple more questions and then we'll, we'll cap this out. I gotta, get, I gotta get ready for my flight. I was doing keto so well uh, and I fell off, struggling to get back on. I've been so tired and have low iron, blood pressure, hair has been falling out like crazy, but other bloods are fine. Any tips? Loan, I'm sorry to hear that you're dealing with that. Understand that it's never about the setback, it's always about the get back. So forgive yourself, make it one good day, have one good day and stack that win into the next day and then the following day. Um, all the foods I mentioned today, quality foods, that'll make a big difference. Remove the bad fats I mentioned earlier, that'll make a big difference for you. Make sure your sleep is good, make sure you're doing some journaling, gratitude journaling, and just make get one good day into the books today and carry that into the next day. If you want some support, my Keto Camp Academy is a terrific program. I offer coaching, I offer my step-by-step -step system. We also have amazing members who could actually support you along the way, along with myself, which is ketocampacademy.com. Uh, Sharon pre-ordered it, thank you so much. Hey. Um, Lori says, hi Ben, or, or Jamila says, hi Ben, are keto breads okay to lose weight? Just make sure it doesn't have any of those inflammatory oils. I like base culture. They make a good keto bread, but it has almonds, almond flour. So if you're not, if you're going without almond flour, I would avoid it just for 30 days. But other than that, it's, those are fine. Bio salts, not a big, oh, bio salts. I'm actually, I like bio salts. Those are great. Especially if you have a sluggish liver, no gallbladder, bio salts before a keto meal could be terrific for you. Okay, I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. Every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm live with you. I'm gonna release a brand new video soon here on the channel on five ways to reverse insulin resistance. You're gonna to wanna to watch this video. It's loaded with science, loaded with practical tips, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell if you wanna get notified when that's gonna be released. I'm gonna go fly to Utah. Uh, send me some love and energy for a safe flight, a successful trip, a great lecture at the conference, and I'll see you when I get back next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Have an amazing day. I hope this was helpful. If it was, thumbs up on this video and share the link on your Facebook, on a Twitter, text it to a friend. This could really help somebody out. So love you.